You're listening to the Wayward Atheist Podcast. Hello, everyone. If this is your first time listening, thank you for joining us. This is a podcast where borders collide, where the gloves are off, where filters are removed, where we tell you exactly what we think about the news, politics, and religion. The Wayward Atheist Podcast is dedicated to free thought, reason, and the pursuit of truth. You can follow us on Twitter at Wayward Atheist, on Spreaker, Stitcher, and iTunes. You can email us at waywardatheistpodcast at gmail.com or leave us a comment on our Facebook page. So without further ado, let's get on with the show. And welcome to the Wayward Atheist Podcast. I am Dave, aka the Great White North. I'm Big Black Gay Dave. I'm Ed, the Everyday Atheist. I'm Dustin Dark. And tonight we are joined by John Sheehan, professional funny man. Yeah, that's what they say. <laughs> All right. Well, first we'll uh, we'll ask everybody how their week was, and then we'll get into an interview with uh, with John. So we'll start with Dave. How was your week, Dave? Awesome, eh? It was great. David, my week was great. <laughs> Other than the, dealing with some family stuff, uh, work pretty good. Okay. And how is the family stuff going? It's going. It's going? Okay. Right on. Moving along to Edward. My week has been a nightmare from hell. Um, first and foremost, I had to get my daughter ready for Europe when she is gone. And that's a one uh, load off my mind. But mostly, I have been editing and I've been combating people on Facebook. So it's been an... Like, trying to argue with an idiot, it just doesn't work. So I've got Ed, to learn to back off a bit. Ed has found a new a new toy, Facebook. He's been stuck on uh, Twitter for, I don't know, like five years, arguing in like two, you know, 20 words at a time because the at whatever takes up fucking half of your fucking argument. And then, you know, if you're if you're if you're commenting to more than two people, that's three quarters of your fucking comment gone. And he's just realized that he can write like 20 paragraphs at a time on Facebook. So he's just been <laughs> all fucking week just going to fucking war. It's, it's hilarious. He's gotten meaner and meaner as the days go by too. Like at first, it's like, excuse me, sir, I disagree with you. By the end of the week, your mother's a whore. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he has yeah. caught our sickness. Like me, yeah. me and Dave have tainted him. It's terrible. <laughs> okay, Dustin, you have exciting news. You're I not mean, uh, as these two fucks. Uh, you know, I, I I bought that car, which is nice. Yeah, uh, what kind nice. of car is it? Uh, it's a 2010 Mini Cooper, um, stick shift, color, uh, red with with black stripes. Um, you know, it's it's nice to go from no car to nice car. Uh, I didn't I, I didn't think I would, you know, it, things turned out much better than I thought they would, let's say. For sure. It's nice when people treat you like an adult, eh? It is. It's so interesting to just go to places that I want to go. It, I, like, I, and I've never been someone that, like, called for rides. Uh, so it's 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 uh, quite an innovation you guys have come up with here, the, <laughs> the, 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 the mobile carriage. The mobile carriage. <laughs> I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that the transit sucks in, in Alabama, the public transit. Uh, yes, we actually aren't allowed to put tax money into public transportation in Alabama. It, it, it has to go to roadways or bridges, like anything that is, that is gotten for transportation. Uh, uh, and it's, it's, it's the way of, of the Alabama government saying, um, hey, poor people, fuck you. And old people too. Let's be honest. If, if you don't, like, you either have to call for a ride or, or just not get by and, the college in Tuscaloosa has a bus system, and there are four routes that don't exactly interact. So that's that's, that's fun crazy. Too. Yeah, yeah, but, and, and but, you have to have their own currency. It's it's very it's it's uncalled for. Yeah, but and they sure as fuck give the churches all 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 kinds of tax breaks down there, right? I mean, churches don't pay taxes in the United States, so I'm not sure how you give them a tax break. Well, that's what I mean. They don't pay taxes. That yes. that is the yes. fucking yes. break. That's a bit they of a break. Take, yeah, that's yeah, the break. Yeah. They don't give them yeah. extra tax breaks. They just yeah. don't pay. They taxes. don't pay yeah. taxes. So, yes. so I mean, like, and and they're not putting in. So that is like giving them money, basically. Yes. They don't give any money to the transit, but they're giving money to fucking churches. Makes I, no fucking sense. 
It's yes, like the Flintstone and that's thing. our particular state. This is this is one of the things that changes area to area. Uh, yeah, like yeah. When, when I first got involved in politics, it was local politics, and uh, Representative Pat- Patricia Todd was trying to get this particular law changed to to no success. But um, but yeah, that's crazy, absolutely crazy. Mm. Okay, well, I yeah, I didn't have an exciting week. I'm just gonna throw an apology out there to the listeners. So my audio, what was happening was audacity the volume was creeping without me knowing it so i would start talking and then it would just get louder and louder and louder so we figured that out one show ago so what i did to try to combat that was turn down the gain completely on the mic and then it completely gargled the sound so we figured it out i un i uninstalled audacity reinstalled it so it should be not fucking retarded anymore should be okay we're should be, except it is me, so I'm sure I'm going to fuck something up. How dare you right. use that word? Oh. That's our word. That's our word. Well, you I, I have a special needs child, so I'll use it whenever the fuck I want. Um, you ruined my joke. I was calling myself retarded, and you just ruined oh, you it. were it's guilt trip. Yeah, get it. It's our word. Anyway, fuck yourself, man. No, it's my <laughs> word. <laughs> All right, so we're going to take a break and head into the first segment where we will interview John. All right, we're back from the break, and now we're going to get into what John Sheehan has been up to lately. He's got some big news. So, Actually, it's just – let me let me just correct. It's just Sheehan. Sheehan. I thought it was oh, Sheehan. Sheehan. No, just oh, Sheehan. Sheehan. Yeah. But it's spelled Sheehan, right? Don't argue with me about my fucking name, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it is what I just told you it is. Let it go. Okay, John Sheehan. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just fucking with <laughs> All right, but but uh, so you recently came out to the public as atheist, like your friends, well, family. Knew I've never, that. I've never been hiding it at all. At all, uh, it's just that you know, it's a it's a small province. I mean, there's five hundred twenty thousand people in the whole fucking province, and uh, there is a lot of uh, religious folk around. And I do a lot of my shows here in Newfoundland, and I just earlier on I didn't want to alienate half the crowd, but uh, over the years I've just gotten more and more outspoken about it, and. I just decided to answer all the questions at once and just put it out there on a video as opposed to just having to argue with people all the time. The, the response was interesting. And did you find that you found more support or was it more negative? There, oh, no, there was a lot more support than negativity, but the ones that were negative were pretty funny. Uh, one lady actually had it on her Facebook post uh, that said, uh, John Sheen, a proud atheist, not afraid to burn in hell. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, that That's was, pretty interesting. Uh, it is. Yeah. yeah, I got a message from, I actually, you know, I, I just got sick of arguing. So I got a message from uh, a lady, uh, I think the same lady, actually. And she said, what are you going to do when you find yourself standing in hell? And I said, you know <laughs> what? I said, you know what? If that happens, give me a week. I'll have my own office. Yeah. You Excuse know, me. Hell's supposed to be bottomless. I'm going to be falling perpetually. And if you read your book, you would know that. <laughs> there you go. Well, all the, all the interesting people are in hell. A, a famous atheist said that. I, I don't, I'm not going to take uh, credit for saying that, but apparently all the interesting people are going to be there. Well, you take it. If it's, if it's there, I mean, you know, all the, the best rock bands are going to be there. You know, it's going to be a fucking party. Exactly. And, and all the smart people. Yep. Fucking right. So you, 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 you're going to put together a show for this, right? Yeah, I am. Yeah. It's, uh, I was calling it Blasphemous. Uh, I think I've recently just, uh, that, that was the working title. That was just what I wanted to put on it for now, but I think I'm just calling it the road to blasphemy. Okay. And, um, is it, a, is it a, a set or is it like, a? no, it's a full show. It's a full it's one a man full... show. It's, it's not so much stand up cause I'm going to be using some, uh, uh, some videos and some, you know, uh, things like that, uh, uh, throw to the video screen every now and again and things like that and a bit of interaction with the audience. So it's not, a, it's not a typical stand up show for me. It's more of a one man show. One man show, and so you'll be giving out a lot of information during this. Yeah, I assume. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Is it interactive? Maybe some non atheists. You're hoping you're hoping Westboro Baptist Church shows up, aren't you? <laughs> no, they won't show up. There's a few around here that I thought might, but I don't. I don't know. Westboro would the be thing... awesome, though. Oh yeah, that'd be great. So the do you do you have any in um, in Newfoundland? Do you have any crazy Pentecostal types? like the Westboro Baptist Church that would show up? Not like the web, not to that extreme. And the Westboro Baptist Church, they're Baptists, you know, but, but there are some, uh, I've 
like I said, I've gotten some interesting uh, comments sent my way, some interesting messages sent my way, and there's been people who uh, see me in the street, actually in, at the mall and stuff, and stop and get engaged in conversation. But the positive re- response has been way more than the negative. Uh, I got a message from this 17-year-old kid who was, uh, he watched my video, and then he came out to his parents as an atheist. And, uh, had, and he had a way of explaining it to them, that they didn't fight, and they were very supportive. Mm-hmm. And do you, do you, do you, um, are you okay with taking the responsibility of that role, seeing as like you are in Newfoundland a celebrity? Mm-hmm. Um, maybe if if closeted atheists or or younger atheists have questions or are having trouble coming out, or you're you're completely willing to take that role? I oh, assume. absolutely, yeah, yeah. I got no problem with that. That's part of the reason why you came out publicly. Yeah, it is. It is. I want because uh, when I um, I mean, I go through. I got bad ADHD. And I went through bouts of depression and everything, and I kept that a secret. And when uh, when Robin Williams passed away, uh, I was contacted by the local news, TV news in the province, and uh, because they had heard through the grapevine that I went through ADHD and stuff, but not publicly. And uh, I turned it down twice, maybe three times before I agreed to go on the air and talk about it. And it was when people started responding positively to that, and I got a lot of uh, a lot of interesting emails from people who were. You know, now they think their son might be having it or their daughter or they had it. And so I guess, you know, I use that kind of, that kind of same schematic blueprint uh, for atheism when I decided to make that public. Yeah, good deal. Um, in your in your one man show, it's already written all out. It's ready to go. Or no, 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 not, not at okay. all. No, right now it's uh, more of like a, uh, right now it's more of a um, synopsis, expanded synopsis, we'll say. And okay. it's it's written sporadically throughout different parts of my notebooks or my computer or whatever. And uh, over the course of the summer now, when I'm when I'm taking time off from stand up and I'm working uh, doing Shakespeare, I'll have time once the show's open to sit down and actually uh, put it all together. What is your writing process like? Uh, I don't really for stand up. It's uh, for this is different. It's just because um, I got to have it all written down in order to have a, a stage manager and be able to work the tech. Uh, for stand up, I just write down jot notes every now and again, and uh, I'll take them on stage every now and again and try some new shit out. But uh, for a show like this, I've got to have a draft. I got to have a couple of drafts edited, uh, stage directions written down, and stuff like that. So this is a bit of a, a different beast. Have you ever done a one man show before? No, never. So it should be it should be interesting. Are you writing this for um, for a Newfoundland audience? No, no, I'm writing it uh, whenever I when I'm. Whenever I leave the province to do stand up, I uh, I leave out ninety five percent of the Newfoundland material anyway. So no, it's not it's not geared towards Newfoundlanders at all. I just saw Ed start crying in the background there. Are they that different in Newfoundland? Like, what's what do you what, you, you have is, to leave ninety percent of your material behind when you cross the border? Well, now that's that's a bit of an exaggeration. Maybe okay, 80%, okay. But oh oh, whoa, uh, excuse me. But yeah, but it is. Uh, I got to slow down for one thing. Uh, and I don't use the same kind of vernacular because Newfoundlanders do have a unique way of speaking. And uh, I use a lot of political stuff. Yeah, it's just a lot different. Um, let me clarify my – sorry, Dave. Okay, well, cause I wanted to clarify my question a bit. I didn't mean like the, the language you use, but sort mm-hmm. of the material. Um, no, cause... yeah, the materials as well. I mean it's, it's a lot of Newfoundland topical stuff, specific stuff, okay. whether it's weather or road conditions, that kind of thing, right? Let's so just... when you're planning to – so are you you're planning to take this say like across Canada? Or just, uh, just... Eventually, I'm hoping. Yeah, okay. right now it's right now. I mean, I'm I'm hoping to partner with the uh, uh, Arts and Culture Center, which is a government subsidized uh, theaters across the province. Right? Uh, you know, there there's I think maybe six in the larger centers, and uh, right now I'm in the application process and meeting process with them to try to do like an 84 an 80 20 split on costs and stuff like that. So it's, it's a very different approach to what I'm used to. It's a learning curve all the time. Okay. Um, I, ju- I just want to touch on the, the Newfoundland centric stuff for Dustin for a second. Like it, we wouldn't, un- it's not like we wouldn't understand, but there's a yes, lot that, that, that goes on. <laughs> yes, it is. I could speed up. Let, and, uh, no, no, no. I, be lost. I mean, like, there, there's a lot of history in Newfoundland that oh, the rest sure. of Canada doesn't know about. And so there's no. places that we have never heard of and events that we would know nothing about no, and people we would uh, know nothing about. So, yeah, unfortunately, a lot of what a lot of what people in the States especially know about Newfoundland is 
you know, propaganda from the seal, anti seal hunt, humane society, and these idiots. Yeah, I saw, I saw you, you, uh, in the past couple of days posting a lot about that. Yeah, yeah, and and I just posted a little while ago. The reality is, is that the humane society of the United States and PETA, the last thing these guys need is for the seal hunt to actually end because there goes their celebrity endorsements, there goes the propaganda, their funding would dry up. Yes, and you, let let's clarify it that there's not bloodthirsty no newfies running around clubbing baby seals no baby seals have been it's been against a lot of hunt baby seals a couple of decades now and uh it's very humane it's a lot more humane than than how chickens are killed in uh cages uh the hackett picket hasn't been used for years they still show images of a white seal on a white you know a sheet of white white sheet of snow and ice uh, blood all over it which is just it's just not the reality and uh they continue to use it and and the cuteness of the animal is irrelevant when it comes it's to hunting. irrelevant. An, a, a, an alligator, an alligator is worth no less than than a seal, right? Exactly. Yeah. So if but, you're going to have they got, a, idiots, they got these guys, you know, the swamp people and stuff like that, they have reality shows about how they're hunting the, the alligators and how vicious they are towards them, and then they have absolutely no idea about seal hunt. It's it's hilarious. That that's our that's our railing against it. So my thought on it is. Like it does give an um, a job and and drives the economy in a place where unemployment is high compared to other parts of Canada, right? Well, yeah, I mean it's it's part of the industry, mm-hmm. is what it is, and uh, I mean it's not even as big a part of the industry as it used to be. But the fact of the matter is, the seal population is ridiculously out of control, and a lot of uh, the problem with uh, fish stocks depleting is because of seals. And I'm not. There's even been suggested there should be a cull on the seals, but their population is completely out of control, and a lot of it is due to pressure from uh, PETA, Humane Society, these people who got uh, 36 countries now of outlawed seal product, and uh, it's all based on uh, misinformation. Hmm. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'll I'll ship you out six Texans, and they'll take care of it in about three weeks. Oh, okay, John. <laughs> Um, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. People are gonna hate us talking about fucking killing seals. I'm gonna bring it back into, in, back to the. So, you have been in, invited to um, Imagine No Religion Seven to yeah to open up for Richard Dawkins, right? Yeah, I'm gonna be performing right in front of him. Yeah, just after okay. the dinner and just before he goes on. And what are you gonna be performing? Is it is it your regular um, stand up routine, or is it gonna be some of uh, I think it's going to be a bit of the show. I think it's going to be a bit of the show, but it's going to be mostly my material, my stand-up material. Okay. Uh, because, like I said, the show itself, um, it's going to be a full stage show, and yeah. as you know, it's multimedia show. But whereas my stand-up is uh, is where I think I'll be going with that, and I don't know if I want to be going on in front of Doc and, and having the nerves of a show I've never done before. So I think uh, using my stand-up material uh, centered around religion and stuff like that, uh, I think that's more more in tune with the event. Yeah, I would I would say. I would say so too. I would be super nervous as well. Even just to, I think even just talking to Richard Dawkins, most people, mm. unless they're celebrities themselves, probably get a little nervous, right? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm very, I'm looking forward to it a lot, but I'm, yeah, nerves are going to get bad by the time I get there. For sure. Edward, you have any questions? Uh, John, your very first um, foray into comedy. Um, mm hmm. What what were what was the impetus for that? Like, what why did you to decide comedy over say theater or say um, a, another kind of performing art? Well, I spent uh, gosh fifteen years in theater before I found comedy, before I found stand up, and uh, not quite fifteen, but I was just I made the mistake of um, I, I guess I'm pretty ambitious, and I made the mistake of taking over a theater company that was uh, about forty grand in debt and. Uh, I shouldn't have. I was too young at the time. I was 27, 28 at the time. I took that over, and after a couple of years, I was just burned out. I hated the thought of theater. I didn't want anything to do with it. I was getting out. And I applied to the RCMP. I found out through that process that I was colorblind. Uh, not severe, but enough to keep you out. Once you fail that test, you're done. And a friend of mine was supposed to do uh, 10 minutes of sketch comedy with me at a fundraiser. Last minute, he couldn't show up because of car problems. I always admired stand up, never had to guts to do it, but I said, fuck it, I'll go for it. And I just uh, gave it a shot. Loved it. Awesome. And John, uh, for our listeners and to, to get to know you a little better, you, ha- you, you have ADHD or ADHD. Mm-hmm. And um, how does that 
Uh, does that help you with your comedy, or does that, uh, you know, you have to work against it? Depends. on As far as the writing aspect of it goes, i got to sit down and focus, and that's really hard. Uh, I was afraid to get on medication at first because I was afraid it would, I would lose a creative edge, and I was afraid that it would change who I was on stage or whatever, but uh, it was the exact opposite. I mean, it's, it's helped me focus, helped me get some clarity. And uh, I, I, I credit the ADHD with, uh, with my becoming a, you know, a proud, outspoken atheist. One more question, if you don't mind. How, 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 um, how exactly does that work with the ADHD? How, how do you credit that to being an atheist? Because I, I went through uh, many years of my life, like 30 plus years of my life, feeling that I wasn't as smart as everyone else because I was missing small details and things. I was just, the ADHD, I had no idea how much it was ruling me. You know, I was good at things that I liked, but everything else was bad and I just didn't care. Uh, when I got on, when I got diagnosed with ADHD and I got on the medication, it gave me a clarity. It gave me a focus. And I think when I first started then uh, looking at religion, because I think I think the most most people still believe, and I don't even know if they actually believe when they actually sit down and think about it, but they keep the, keep up the pretense because they haven't actually directed their intelligence at it. And I was the first thing I was told by the doctors was that ADHD has nothing to do with intelligence, and more often than not, people who suffer it have above average intelligence just don't know how to direct it. And so I directed it and uh, I started to hyper focus, which is a which is a condition of ADHD. And when I did that on religion, that's when I started to see so many cracks and so many questions and no answers. Did you go to your pastor? I don't know what what kind of Christian you were to try was, to find. I was the a Roman Catholic, but I never. You were a Roman Catholic. I was did a Roman you, Catholic, but I never went to I never went to church. You never from went the to time church. I was a teenager, really. You know, so it wasn't a part of my life anyway. But it was. Uh, I just started researching it and uh, reading into it, reading more about it, stuff like that. And uh, it wasn't that I was looking for a faith to find. I was just interested. And I was almost, it was almost immediately where I just started thinking, this is all bullshit. This is so much bullshit. Yeah. And then, and then it's gotten to the point now where I find it insulting. And I, it bugs me when, I, you know, when somebody, uh, how, how audacious and arrogant it is when somebody suffers a loss, for someone to go up to, up to them and say, God is watching out for you now. I send my prayers to you, and may God be with you in this time. I'm like, fuck you. Who the hell are you to say that? Should have said it beforehand. Exactly. Right? Fuck, fuck off. Him. And now, are you, you're going to pray? But he does, doesn't he have a fucking plan? Yeah, so, the, so are you saying he's wrong? Are you trying to talk him out of his plan? And then you got some people saying to me, well, why, why can't you just say you believe? So you're, you're suggesting there's an omnipotent deity that can read our thoughts and you want me to try to pull one over on them. <laughs> of course, it. of course that's what they're saying. Okay. Um, you're going to stick around for the rest of the show. We'll, we'll get your, your, the rest of your info after, but if anybody wanted to hear some of your stand up, where would they find you? Uh, I'm going to be in BC for three weeks starting, uh, uh, the 28th of, uh, April. And, and so, what club? Uh, actually we're going to be all over BC at the different resorts and hotels. We're going to be in, uh, Mackenzie, Prince George, Cornell, uh salmon river something like that if they wanted tickets if they wanted tickets for those where would they find check out the big dog comedy big dog comedy okay and if they wanted the company bringing me up (laughs) okay and if they wanted to see any videos of your stand-up where would they find those uh i got nothing recent actually all the old stuff is on youtube okay on youtube yeah Alrighty. okay so we'll get into the main topics right after this Hi, this is John Sheen, and you're listening to the Wayward Atheist Podcast. Okay, and we're back from the break. And the first topic of tonight, it's going to be kind of a a tangled web of mess. We're going to talk about the super mega awesome mother of all dragons bomb that was dropped on Afghanistan. We're going to talk about Syria, and we're going to talk about North Korea. And of course, America's involvement and Russia as well. So, fellas, I, I understand like it's a it's a huge topic and there's a lot to to break down. So why don't we just start with um, with Afghanistan it seems to be the more um, simple of the four issues. I, I also want to before we get too far into it, like uh, today, it was was the day today's the 14th. <laughs> Uh, this is going to come out in a week, and chances are a lot of information is going to change by then, but uh, we're going to talk about it anyway. The, so. the information has probably changed by the time we 
by the time finish you get the sentences, fin- finish yes. the sentences. Yes. But yes. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna Oh, start this just Trump. in in the last five minutes Trump has flip flopped four times. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Um so there's a lot of misinformation going around about the bomb itself. So mm-hmm. I've seen a lot of people saying that it costs three hundred and twenty million dollars, that that it's Trump that decided to drop it and Trump basically manufactured it and he spent three hundred and twenty million bombing wow. thirty six thirty six ISIS fighters. I will say that Trump never knew that never knew about it. I don't think no. I think he authorized the military and I'll tell you why I think Trump knew nothing about it, because Trump would have bragged about it. And yes. when they asked him about it, he just said, uh, you know, I gave my I gave my ma- Military idiot to already to do it. Bullshit. He, if he had known about it, he would have been front and center saying, yep, that was me. I ordered it. So, so I'm going to back up what you're just saying with some actual facts on, on, on this. So those bombs were manufactured by George W. Bush back in 2002, 2003. Each bomb cost 16 million. 20 of them were manufactured. During Obama's time, uh, the authority was given to the military to to use the bomb when they see the situation that fits. So a remote location where, mm-hmm. you know, tunnels need to be squashed because that's basically what that bomb does. Yeah, it's, it's meant yeah for no, no foreseeable civilian casualties yes. or anything. Yes, no civilians. Um, what it's meant to do is squash buildings and squash mountains. Like, it's obviously yeah, it's not going to squash bomb. it. Yeah. Yes, ex- exactly. So um, Trump never had to give the authority to the military to use this. So regardless if, if it was right of them um, to, to be bombing in Afghanistan, the military decided that that was the tool to use for the specific job that they were doing at that time. So just to get that out there, the bomb did not cost $320 million. It cost 16. Trump did not spend 320 million bombing uh, its 36 ISIS fighters. It was already in play, and the military decided to do that. What Trump is at fault for, though, is for loosening up um, the authority given to the military. So Obama had a very micromanagerial position over the military. He wanted to know exact number of troops, what weapons were using. He wanted to be involved in every plan where Trump has come forward and said, I'm not a military man, so I'm going to let the military decide what's going on. I'm sure they told him that they were going to drop the bomb. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Well, what do you, do you think there's any correlation with the... Uh... With the timing of this, though, with North Korea, with the fact that they're going to be celebrating the Day of the Sun, and uh, you know they have an elaborate one of their one of their chief defenses is an elaborate system of tunnels and bunkers and everything else, and uh, this was a clear indication, you know, this isn't going to fucking help you. Yeah, no, for for sure, I would I would agree with that. It's also it's also that the first um, uh, U.S. military casualty of the year happened in the region by yeah. ISIS fighters in Afghanistan and the ISIS is now trying to move into Afghanistan and one of Trump's campaign promises whether you fucking he's an ass like whether you believe him or not I I like I don't believe him half time but or more than half time all the time actually but he did in in his campaign promises say that he was going to hit ISIS harder than he was going to bomb the shit out of him he was going to bomb the shit out of him and i think in giving the military the the right to do that or or like loosening up the micromanaging that that obama had that he's effectively done that so i would agree i would say that it's to show north korea you can hide we can get you and still not use nuclear weapons but also to to go after ISIS itself and retaliate for the casualty that mm-hmm. took place in the area by those specific ISIS fighters. I'm torn on North Korea because on the one hand, you know, it's it's scary uh, to think that, I mean, Trump loves an audience. You know, he loves an audience. And it's scary to think what he's going to do when he pushes uh, that regime. But, yes. on the other side, but on the other side of the coin, though, I really believe that they cannot be allowed to have nuclear weapons because if they got that kind of threat, if they got that kind of thing, to, if they become a superpower, nuclear power, North Korea, then he's not going to be afraid. He's going to be a lot more aggressive towards the south. He's going to be sh- even shittier to his people because he has a nuclear deterrent. Now, we also yes. got to put this in perspective a little bit, too, because North Korea has always said, OK, we do have nuclear weapons. Um we are not afraid to use them. When talks broke yeah. down, we're, we're, but they, nobody believed them. Well, then now, when they started testing them, this, yeah, yeah. When, when they I started think, testing them, what they would do though is say, "Okay, we'll we'll stop stop testing if you give us uh, X number of uh, tons of rice to feed our people." Mm-hmm. And one of the things that North Korea did, because well, 
United States got really smart at this. Hey, what they would do is actually write on the grains, uh, 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 literally write on the grains, um, that this was a, uh, a gift on behalf of the United States. And um, what <laughs> Kim Jong Il used to- who had that shitty job written that on the grains, right? <laughs> Kim Jong Un, what he would say was, "See how powerful I am. The United States pays tribute to me." That's pretty smart. So he, this this conflict is well overdue. This should have been mm-hmm. done before they started testing their first one. This yeah. conflict should have been, and it would have been quick. But the good thing about this, in some respects, is that China is backing up the United States. The fact mm-hmm. that China, who really pays the bills in North Korea, um, yeah. is actually going against them, and so that's a. That, if they want to be a a, a country, we'll say, uh, they would have to remove their, their the 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 uh, nuclear weapons off the table. Right now, I think it's posturing right now by the North Koreans, but someday it's we we gotta we gotta call their bluff. Yeah, yeah and if and he ever if he ever starts feeling like his grip is loosening, he'll use it. Yeah, I I would I would also say that like just because. Even if they come up with with uh, nuclear um, power, it doesn't mean they have the delivery system, right? So they may be able to reach, um, say, South Korea or maybe like China or Japan. But this posturing saying that they're going to oh, yeah. a- attack the U.S. is nonsense. But for me, um, I have always said, um, ever since I first started looking into North Korea, since I watched the first um, Vice Guide to Travels when they went to North Korea, that, okay... Now, I am not naive enough to believe that that we as you know NATO or Western allies go into the Middle East to actually liberate people. Obviously, we're there for natural resources and and other things. But if you do say that you you attack countries or you attack regimes because you want to liberate people, nobody deserves to be liberated more than the goddamn North Korean oppressed citizens. Like, if Man, we were ever yeah. going to attack somebody to to liberate their citizens, it's got to be fucking North Korea. And I don't want to hear shit from the fucking hippies that, that it isn't right, because it is right to attack them over this. I agree. And not only that, but... And you also, if, if that ever happened, and you, t- and you took down his regime, and you liberated the people, you would need millions... Of people to help with just a simple culture shock of what these people would yes. would, would experience. I was talking to Dustin and, and Ed about this yesterday. What what would it be like? Because like maybe say half the population would be adulated and be like really excited and happy to be free of this, but that indoctrinated portion of the society that really believed that he was a deity, that would be harder to deal with, right? It would be, it would yeah. be more of a shock for them. I bet yeah, they're more of a, almost like Stockholm syndrome in a, in a sense. Yes, go ahead, Dustin. I, I bet they're more of a minority than than you would think they are. The people that are truly indoctrinated. Like it seems like he has a regime of fear more than than one of legitimate adoration. All right, if you're if not only yourself but your family is going to be put in concentration camps and and even offspring that have not been born yet might be born into work camps. Uh, I think that would keep a lot of people that desperately want to get out of line in line. Yeah. So, uh, you know, this is, this is very different from a, uh, religious, like a legitimate religious situation like we had in Afghanistan or Iraq. We're like, Oh, we're going to show up and they're going to greet us as liberators. Like, uh, they're going to see you as invaders because they legitimately believe in that religion and they believe in that land and they believe that you're infidels here to take it from them. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you're being starved by a totalitarian government that shows up and takes away your family, I think you're going to be much happier to see those tanks roll in. Maybe I'm being a naive American, but that's 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 just I I, I feel like it's we're we're a bit um, shy to go in and and help people after the gaffes that we've had in the middle east but i I just i feel like this is a different situation and it's a different uh, it's a different situation i agree with that but it's also the fact a lot of these people a lot of these north koreans i mean you believe the world you're brought into and if that's the only world you know that's the world you accept and there's a lot of that over there 
because they have no contact with the outside world. So they think this is the way it is. Well, and you also... That's uh, what I mean by culture shock. Oh, I definitely, ah. because you, you have no newspapers, no internet. Mm-hmm. You have no... Uh, except uh, for, you know, state-run. State yeah, state-approved. Mm-hmm. I mean, television, there, uh, like, there's no theaters except to go see the Praise the Great Leader p- uh, plays mm-hmm. that are in the theaters. So this is a, going to be, uh, like... A really big culture shock for for a big portion of the population. It's Dorothy landing in Oz. Yeah, and and him himself, Kim Spoon Un or whatever the fuck his name is, he he you know he is like an old school dictator. He kills his fucking uncle. He kills his fucking half brother. Like this is Roman time shit. Well, you know what I mean? Right, and he is the final. Uh, part of the trinity right he had his yes. a grandfather who's still president by the way oh yeah he's, yeah, even, yeah. Death, yeah. yeah. yeah even in death yeah yeah even in death and then you have his father and then you have the son uh, the grandson so that's the triad and so this whole but remember i remember christopher hitchens always saying that north korea was the most religious state he's ever seen everybody worships the dear leader um mm-hmm. And th- so this is going to be a major culture shock, but I think it's going to be uh, a, a better um, a better case scenario than walking into somewhere like Iraq uh, or Iran after you know a, a major conflict. Yeah, and my my question though is this: um, Why is Trump going? Why 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 are the why are the warships heading to North Korea? Is it strictly because of their because they've been threatening nuclear capabilities for years and years and years? It, it, in his in his campaign, he he was talking about North Korea. In his campaign, he was talking about China. So he he goes he, he threatens North Korea. <clears throat> North Korea gets all fucking crazy, like the hornet's nest is buzzing. Then he goes to China and he says to China, China, you'll get a better trade deal if you back us on this North Korean play. And no other president, even though he's a fucking ass, he did a good business deal here because no other president has been able to get fucking China on their side when dealing with North Korea. China has always taken the side of North Korea. How Trump did it, it because since he he was a total shit to China to China during his his run up to becoming president, he he talked all kinds of nonsense about them. So I, I other than fucking well played, I don't know how to I don't know how to explain it. Um, just one thing that might have helped out that whole situation was the fact that China and Japan are starting to engage, and yes, if. If um, a nuclear weapon from Korea actually landed on the doorstep of Japan, Japan would arm with nuclear weapons. And China does not want a nuclear Japan. No. And and Japan has sent warships to join the American armada. Just well, so that's, the other, that's the other thing that's being underreported. But, uh, you know, according to military magazines, stuff like that, military newspapers, like, this is not the first time warships have gone into that region. They've done it before. This, it's just that now with the extra tension, it's getting a lot of, you know, they're steaming towards it. And that's a good headline. And that's a, if you're a news network, that's the right wording to use to make it very dramatic. You know, yes. they're headed there. They're steaming towards there. They've been there before. Yes, during you know, Clinton's done, time, right? During, yeah, but during they've the done Clinton operations year? there before. And training okay. operations there before, but now the, the the language that they're using because everyone is after ratings, and there's so many news networks they're steaming towards there, and they're using the the almost the fucking Independence Day music in the background, and it's you know what it's it's scary because they're hyping it up, and you got to remember, boys, this is not a fucking movie, you know mm-hmm. that you're this this could turn nasty really fast. Right, this this would be the invasion of of the, the first. Full scale invasion of a nuclear power? Uh, is, am, am I wrong? Someone correct me. No, no, yeah. I think you're right. You're right. right. Okay, so and 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 to be fair, I don't think it's exactly 
it's not the same as happened before. Like, yes, physically, boats have floated through these waters before recently. Well, yeah, uh, that's what I'm but, saying. Yeah. But, there's, but Trump's at the helm now, and why would he go to China and, and make this, you know, great deal? Uh, God, I hate myself for saying those words and those orders. <laughs> uh, you know, but, it's going to be great. It's going to be yes, great. Yes, it's going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, but um, – <clears throat> So why would he go? Why would we set this up if there wasn't going to be some sort of action? I'm not saying there's going to be action, but I think it's fair to believe or to to um, to very strongly consider that that there is going to be some sort of action soon. And honestly, if they are testing and they are testing nuclear arms and they're working on a delivery system, possibly now's the time. Absolutely. Now's the time. And and yeah, got, uh, you got to stop them before they got it. And to um, I'm going to play a quick round of the Young Turks. And what I mean is I'm going to wildly speculate here. When you're coming in and, and the, the type of character Trump tries to be, this, this um, you know, businessman slash gangster type of, of person, he's doing exactly what you would expect him to do. He comes in, he waits for somebody to fuck up, and then he overreacts to it. Mm-hmm. Right. He sends, you know, 60. I know not quite, but 60 Tomahawk missiles into the Middle East boots. Not nah, fuck that. That was just a warning. By the way, guys, now that you know I'm in charge and we're not fucking around, there's this crazy guy over here that we've all been watching the last 60 years. Um, let's fuck him up. And people are lining up behind him. Am, 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 am I saying that that's the plan or that's what's happening? No, but it seems uh, very p- planned. And I, I, I Everyone keeps underestimating Trump, and I'm just I I wonder if if half of, of of I wonder how much of it is an act. You know, my my dad goes around and acts dumber than he is because it gives them an upper hand on people. I don't know right. with Trump. You I know, think I think this is just Trump is is at the he's at the right point in history for him because this was going to happen regardless. I just think it's dangerous that it's him right now that's at the helm because I think he's a He's like Fair. a kid. The first time he sets off a firecracker, going, "Whoa, that was cool! I want to do that again." So uh, I, I, I'm I, can, gonna, I can also see that perspective. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give some uh, some some uh, a, a base to work off from from here. So Trump's father was really uncaring. He was an asshole. He didn't pay any attention to his kids. Um, Trump found a father figure in a lawyer in New York that was very litigious. And one of the things that this super aggressive litigious lawyer taught Donald Trump was when somebody hits you, you hit them back in a way that is so exaggerated to the situation that you are in that they forget what the situation was about. So somebody calls Trump a name he sues them for $150 million. He, it's instilled in it and it's taught to him to just overreact in every situation. And you can really see this in his behavior as well. But yeah, also, some of it is blatant. He's, he's praising somebody up one minute, but the second they say something negative about him, they're an idiot. They're the worst person at their job. This is, they're so horrible. And, right. and he over-exaggerates. You know, something else I think to consider, you know, why all these actions are suddenly being taken is something that Dave talked about earlier. And that that he has, to a certain extent, surrendered control of the military over to uh, the, the, military. The, uh, to the military itself, the, the generals. And I kind of have mixed feelings about that. Uh, on one hand, uh, Trump's not around the military. Yay. Uh, <laughs> on the other hand, um, the... From from what information we have of, of past presidents interacting with generals and planning military actions, the president almost always throttles back the military. The the um, in the Korean War, the plan that came from the military, I, I forget his name, uh, but he ended up being dis- dismissed. He wanted to drop, you know. A, a few dozen nukes right between China and North Korea to, to cut off the flow of troops that were coming in from China. Uh, and that's, that was the plan that the military was pushing. And uh, which is scarier, a military that doesn't have a civilian led leadership throttling back that has the power that we have or Trump in charge. I, I I'm would not say, sure. Oh, 
I would say though, Dustin, that that you would I would I would assume that it works like this. Mm-hmm. Um, Trump has to okay whether or not there's attack, but sure. he doesn't manage how they do the attack, the planning of the the attack, what weapons they use. So I don't think that he's given them a complete free for all. He certainly loosened the reins that Obama had on them, but I just I and I I fucking sound like I'm defending the fucking cunt. I'm I'm really not. You know, I'm just kind of stating the 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 fact of the situation. I'm sure that yeah. he still he still has some kind of control, which is not any fucking better. Because let's be honest, what I just said, the guy was taught to hyper overreact in situations. So you mm-hmm. have a you 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 have a, a person that that thinks that he's the greatest, that the U.S. is the greatest, that he's superior to most people, and is prone to overreaction. So. In turn, on the other side, you have a person that is delusional and actually believes that North Korea is superior to the U.S. and would beat them in a fight. That is that spells fucking disaster. It does. It, 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 does. it really right. does. Like I don't see, and this is pure speculation. Okay, but I like Ed and Dustin know I study um, world conflicts a lot. Like, I spend a lot of time thinking about it. Maybe more than I fucking should. I don't see a way out of this situation without North Korea backing down. Because Trump will not. Right, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, I ex- I expect conflict. Personally. I do. And it's speculation, yeah. but I do. And of course. Part of me is like, fuck no, let's not do that. Because people dying sucks and people being bombed sucks. But part of me is like, yeah, let's let's you know let's liberate these people. Well, I and, and I'm I'm not trying to defend Trump either. Dear God, don't 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 take it that way. And let's I'm, just uh, let's I'm, just agree I'm, from I'm, now on in this conversation that nobody's defending Trump. Just okay. agree. Okay. agree. Yeah. Well, okay. I I do try to be positive in these type of situations because I need to sleep at night and and so forth. Uh, there's there's an old military strategy that uh, the kindest war is where you show up with unrelenting and overwhelming yes. force, right? You show up, and um, we might get that with a crazy fucker like him, uh, yeah. it, it, which would definitely be superior to a drawn out war. For God, sure. God, am I digging for like silver linings? <laughs> I'm and digging. Let's, let's, let's not forget. <laughs> The last, the last Korean War, uh, a lot of people forget about it. But it was well, yeah. They dirty, don't even call it a war anymore. They, they call, don't it even call it conflict. But that was a dirty, violent, messy uh, for the people that were there. It was a fucking shit show. Like it was not a place you wanted, you want to be. And I'm sure the 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 government and the military in North in North Korea are devout to that fucking system and will defend that land. To the last man. You know, in a little factoid, um, the Korean War was the first time Congress's approval wasn't used to go to uh, war, and it has never been given again. So. But on the plus side, we got a pretty good TV show out of it. Yes. Yeah. MASH, MASH, right? MASH, yeah. 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 Oh, I just got so nostalgic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm going to give any of you the last word that, that you – I think my opinion is – pretty out there i don't like war but i do like the fact that maybe maybe the iron curtain so to speak is going to be lifted off of north korea yeah i agree with what i agree with uh i can't remember who said it earlier but uh, if ever people deserve to be liberated it's these folks the saddest thing i think though is that kim il un is it's not spoon like, un. yeah spoon un. He is not like Putin. He's not like most world leaders in that um, you could have a cold war. In the fact that you could stare at each other for hours and, and this will last 50 years. Everybody be in panic. Um, but you, you can't do that with him. He, he, if he wants to use it, he's crazy enough to fucking use a nuke. And that's the scary yep. part about this. Yes. Mm. Uh, well, that's I, it. I think he's, he's far more dangerous than Putin. Putin, because Putin, uh, for as powerful as he is, he's still going to... There are people in Russia who would actually stand up to him. But with North Korea, 
Kim Jong Un is the voice, and everyone else kowtows. Yes. So, John, mm-hmm. speaking speaking about Putin, let's uh, let's move over to Syria and the quagmire that is the fact that Putin is trying to um, push the U.S. out of the Middle East and become the power over there. Yeah. Well, I mean, Russia just vetoed the. Uh, they were going to investigate further into the uh, chemical attack, and Russia vetoed it. Uh, of of course they they would yeah. like this isn't the first time that it, that Assad has used chemical weapons no against his his own citizens and for the fucking people that, that are in Canada and the U S that are fucking defending Assad and saying that that it, the, the U S did the chemical attacks and that the the banking system in fucking Syria is awesome because it's owned by Assad and that fucking all the fucking wonderful things fuck you. You don't mm-hmm. even know what the fuck you're fucking talking about. He's a fucking violent dictator that murders yep. his own citizens. Eat a big fat fucking dick. I'm tired of seeing fucking memes about how great fucking Assad is. It's why we have refugees in our fucking country is because of that fuck. But, 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 but the gold. But he has gold money. Who gives a and fuck? He, and, and America can't handle it. Listen, I was talking to a uh, a refugee. Uh, he's gone. He's a Syrian refugee, and he had documented his uh, his leaving Syria and moving to England, and uh, and the process that went through it. And I was talking to him, and uh, and he is literally terrified for his family and friends back home that are that are experiencing this type of uh, warfare. He he himself was captured for protesting against Assad and was tortured. So this guy, Assad, is no hero of the people. He is a bastard that needs to be taken out. Yeah, and, and the thing is, is like these these fucking these people in, in Syria, you have to worry about Assad killing you. You have to worry about ISIS killing you. You have to worry about fucking Canada and the U.S. and the U.K. dropping a bomb on you. Now you have to worry about Russia, who says that they are okay with targeting civilians if they think that a a fucking ISIS militant is in the area and have bombed schools and fucking hospitals and maybe you'll get in the cross crosshairs of the fucking rebels like what the fuck man like seriously like the 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 average citizen in Syria right now has it fucking rough oh yeah they're they're fucked like you have all you, you know and and you're already poor to begin with and what you have going on in front of you is the the power play of the two most powerful countries in the world. So basically what's going on is this. Putin is surrounded in Europe. We don't have our full force over there, but Canada, uh, UK, Germany, US, we're loading up all those countries like Latvia, Poland, we're loading them all up with with tanks, planes, soldiers. So we we have him effectively boxed in in Europe. Where we don't have him boxed in is in the Middle East. And he's actually building bases over there. He's trying to take control of shipping lanes. And him taking the side of, of Assad, that's his move into the Middle East. He's effectively saying, I'm going to take over um, trying to kill ISIS and, and, and get rid to these rebels and and cut us out out of the deal he's he's trying to cut us um out of being turkey's ally he like this is where his move is it's in the middle east where he can you know build up his troops and have and have room to move because in europe he's completely surrounded yeah absolutely i mean we're over there right now training um in or we're training uh the ukrainians we're training their uh their army to fight you know we've got yeah. uh, troops on the ground over there we're we're actually taking over next month. We're taking over command in in lot in Latvia of. Um, I'm heading. I'm heading to Ukraine next week. Oh, fucking crazy! Yeah. Good luck. It's my second time. Actually, I was over there okay. last. Uh, I was over there in December. For, uh, for the troops or for? Yep. Uh, right on. Yep. Good deal. How was that? It was amazing, actually. But I had a terrifying moment. I'll be honest. Uh, Myself and uh, a musician from Montreal and two gold medalists with the women's hockey team decided uh, to go to a karaoke bar in Ukraine at 4 a.m. And uh, after about half an hour, they were all in a good mood. The Ukrainians were in a good mood. And uh, much to my everlasting shame, I found myself uh, singing Hit Me Baby One More Time. And 
that wasn't the terrifying part. The terrifying part came when I realized I wasn't looking at the screen. So <laughs> I'm not comfortable with that at all. <laughs> My Motley Crue tattoo started to itch and shit. It was just really <laughs> manhood. Your dick fell off. It was fucking, fucking terrifying. Your, your balls were in somebody's purse over there. Holy shit, John! That's there was a, a moment that, of self. Is... There was a moment of self hate. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, so Ed, what do you what do you think about about this situation in in Syria? Just you know, like, so l- let's look at it at it like this. So um, Assad attacks the civilians with the chemicals. Trump sends fifty tomahawks into an air base, which was strategically done as not to actually really attack. You you know what I mean? Like he he called Putin an hour prior so that Putin. His soldiers could be out of the way, but Putin is Assad's ally, so obviously he's going to call Assad and tell him to get yep. his fucking guys out of there, right? So, and then so Putin comes back and says, "Do it again, and we're going to attack you." Okay, the, do you think he's actually willing to attack the U.S.? Not right yet, no. No, uh, but what I think is really uh, important about what what Trump did when he called Putin to get his troops out. And he knowing full well that he would call uh, Assad was the fact that he was telling uh, Assad in, in a roundabout way, we're not afraid, we're not going anywhere, we're coming, and we're, we're, we're going to hold you to account for what you've done. Because be- prior to this, you have to understand, prior to this, the U.S. has been pretty weak in, in the Middle East, especially in, that, in the Syrian conflict. And... This kind of said, "Well, I'm not letting Putin come in. Your your buddy is going to is getting a warning this time. Next time he might not. This is what we're going to do. Um, it shows a real level of strength that I, you haven't seen from a, a an American president in decades. Can can I? Can I well, can I, you know re- that that was because he went <laughs> illegally about it. He didn't go to Congress, which he should have done. No, Obama hang went on, to Congress. Hang on, that's, 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 hang on. John, That's so unfair. On, like, we, we have no, no, we hang have, on, like, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. So the, the Congress thing, the yeah. president needs to go to Congress if he declares war. Oh, I but, see. Okay. But the president can launch uh, missiles or or small attacks on other countries without going to Congress as long well, as he's the, not declaring war. The well, last what was time the, what a pres- big conflict with uh, Obama then? Because they were they were trying to get permission from Congress to do it. He, but he didn't need it. He didn't need it. He just did it. Oh. He just did oh, it. Anyway. Like he just like Obama was looking for a way out over there. Because don't forget right. that Obama was like, if you cross this fucking line that I've drawn in the sand. Which was the same situation. Use chemical weapons against your citizens, and we will attack you. He did it, and then Obama didn't. So, like, I would say that it was kind of a, a kind of a, a way out for him, a little bit. You know what I mean? Do you know who the the last country Congress granted permission for the president to declare war was? It was World War Two. No. Bulgaria, right? So Bulgaria. it's 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 so it's so I don't want to say unfair, but to be like well, he didn't go to Congress. Yeah, man, they 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 don't. They yeah. they haven't in um, my lifetime, my parents' last lifetime. We they it's <clears throat> it's a symbol now. Like they kind of oh, ask see. and poke around, uh, and and it all started funny enough with Korea, uh, because we maybe had six or ten nukes and we were threatening Russia with them. And uh, our official stance as a country was: if we go to war, nukes are absolutely fucking literally on the table because we just gutted our military after World War Two. Uh, so if the president comes out and says we're at war, then people are going to say, why aren't we using the nukes that we have? And either he didn't want to use them, which is likely the case, or we only had a handful of them and we were saving them in case if it was a distraction for Russia to make a move. Right. Start a move Dustin, in Asia. And, anyway, Dustin, Ed, go ahead. Dustin, Dustin yeah. you don't know what gutting the military after World War Two is. Remember, Canada was the fourth superpower after World War Two. Yes. And yes. we're 14th right now. Yes, uh, I, but is. as what what I'm saying is, we had to drastically reduce the mil- the military budget, and uh, we actually tossed around uh, cutting out like amphibious divisions and everything altogether after World War II. Uh, we drastically reduced the strength of our military, and Russia didn't, and we countered that by uh, bluffing about nukes for a 
decade or so but is what I'm saying. Let's also put it in context too. Um, uh, we didn't see the left or the right bitching too much when uh, Bill Clinton fired uh, Tomahawk missiles uh, Correct. right through Somalia and destroyed the pharmacy there that was supplying medication for uh, all of Somalia. What he did, he did it without permission with from anybody. He just launched missiles. So let's let's keep it in context here. Let, there's the declaration of war is the only thing that Congress needs to be contacted about. Yeah, uh, move, like not moving forward, but um, do you guys see a way out? Like the U.S. and Russia should not be playing this fucking topsy turvy game in in such a volatile situation to begin with is the okay so the cold war john do you remember the cold war you're probably around the same age as me like of course yeah i'm 42 uh, the, the, yeah the, the the feeling the feeling of of being scared of that nuclear war as a child i've spoken about this before it was it was like a, a weighted blanket on you it was always talked about it was always in the newspapers we were always worried about it and and the difference now is though is is the leaders of the two countries this is fucking not cool to have fucking putin and trump if we're heading into a second cold war or even a hot war with with these two fucking guys this makes it more scarier to me that these two guys are are at the helm i don't know if you agree with that but yeah, I agree with that. Absolutely. That's what I've been saying on uh, that's what I've been saying on Facebook stuff. This this is terrifying because of who's in charge. Not just in the States, but in North Korea and in Russia. It's just it's a bad mix. It's it's walking around with uh, dynamite with you know, sweating dynamite in your hand. It is certainly a historical roll of the dice. Yep. Yeah. You never know how they're gonna react. Because no. one one is a hot headed fucking uh billionaire fucking tycoon that is used to getting his own way and the other one is a legit as fucking assassin that is used to getting his own way you know what i mean like it mm-hmm. like and 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 the the syrian people that are caught in between are just pawns in this they're just pawns in the fucking in the world power fucking chess match that is unfolding over there it's 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 scary for us over here could you imagine what it's like for them over there? No. And, and uh, Dave, I just want to want to have one closing thought on this. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Ed. My my closing thought on this is let's let's get some of these Syrian refugees here safe and sound. Let's call it a day for th- uh, for them. Let them have a, a peaceful existence. Um, you know, and not have to worry about bombs blowing up over their heads or killing them. So let's let's vetted though vetted. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Vetted refugees. Yeah, let's get them here for sure. And, and there is a difference, though. We can't. Let's. Look, I, I have to split that here. There is a difference between a refugee and an immigrant. Um, and a refugee is someone who's fleeing their country, you know, against their will. They have to. They have to escape for their own lives. Where an immigrant can choose to come to a country to leave out of you know, to for economic reasons or and to better their lives that's the difference there is a big difference a lot of people get mixed up and say well we don't want many more immigrants no what you want is uh you want to keep refugees coming that need to be vetted yes but they need to be safe that's what we need to do Mm -hmm. yeah like hey hey bro if the u.s was fucking dropping bombs on you you'd want out of there too that's right. And if and if putin was operating and and your own fucking government was fucking killing you with chemicals think about that think about that for one second your own government is killing you with chemicals you'd want to be out exactly. i'm the fight and die type sorry you're, you're, you're like yeah. fuck it i'm going down yeah you yeah, know no, yeah. no I'm, I'm, I'm i mean maybe maybe it's the south in me but uh no man i'll i'll plant some ids on the side of the road like i'll go full afghani let's do it <laughs> like I, yeah no that's yeah yeah i'm, I'm not gonna like run because people are attacking like i'd, I'd rather die with my land Okay, but if you're if you're a single mom with a two year old, it's a little right. bit of a different right. situation. Right, a hundred thousand percent agree. Okay. Yes, I, or if you I have children at all, or even or even uh, a man with children, you have to think about the children. Not well, yourself. I got three kids and a grandkid, and I tell you, as much as I like pick, I, I don't as like as much as I like picking up for myself. And I've been in situations where I haven't backed down 
<laughs> when I really should have, uh, my first priority would be getting him, getting them the hell out of there. Yes. Oh, of, oh, of course, of course. Um, I am a young man, and it is more or less my job uh, to, to, to stay and fight. Someone's got to do it. You know, fuck it. Exactly, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Best of, luck, has. best of luck to you. Take it easy. I'm, <laughs> yes, I'm out here. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right, all right. We're going we're gonna to lighten this shit up, and we're going to make fun of fucking Alex Jones next. So we're back from the break, and that brings us to piss on this. And, of course, as always, we have some Alex Jones for you. Take it away, Dustin. It is nice to start out with some Alex Jones. Uh, We've been talking about this growing global conflict, and um, Alex Jones is going to weigh in on it. So let's let's hear what he has to say. The world's in the greatest danger ever, and the Democratic Party and the Republican establishment are lined up showing weakness in the face of all this garbage, and that's why the communist Chinese, the biggest mass murderers in history, don't respect us. Because the Democratic Party and snot-nosed people like the Intel deputy head, uh, Adam Schiff over there, are scumbags. You think having all those fairies and pansies up there with little chicken necks running around attacking our president all day makes us look strong, it makes us look weak. doesn't matter, we've got... How dare you bring the fa into this? <laughs> they are a magical, enchanted people. <laughs> Fucking Alex Jones. Carry on, sir. Ten to one nuclear weapons against China. Those crazy people have proven they'll go to war. They're completely psycho like Kim Jong-un on power trips. So if China keeps pushing, the only option is full commitment to hit China preemptively. That's the only way to survive this nuclear war, and Trump knows it. And Russia has already been told they better stand down. The United States is preparing to nuke China. So get ready, assholes. All of you wanted it, you're going to get it. Turn that off. God damn it. (laughs) (laughs) So, so Alex, Alex, you stupid fuck. Um, He's always talking about how he has all the data. Um, China is actually a... Uh, they're not an ally by far they're not an ally but they're on our side on this one and it's not fucking china that the allied countries are are heading over there for it's north korea and china sent 150,000 troops to the north korean border to tell north korea to stand down it didn't work but it shows uh, a willingness for china to work with us since trump told them Work with us, and you'll get a better trade deal. Alex, you stupid motherfucker. <laughs> but, but the fairies. <laughs> like, oh, like... My oh. helicopters and the SUVs and the data. It's in my brain. I can't sleep at night. I've got too much information. Oh, my you guys haven't part, read the books. I've read the books. My favorite part was the... God damn it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Cut this off. There's, Alex Jones, I'm out. There's oh, yeah. super cuts. There's super cuts all over YouTube of him being like, I'll bash their fucking head in. I'm sorry. This is family <laughs> family. I'm sorry, guys. sorry, my bad. Uh, this, this is a family program. But, we don't, I, we don't do I, I, I'm actually surprised that, um, like, because he's such a Trump fan, I'm actually surprised that he's so out of touch w- with what's actually going on. Like, I, I would have figured that he would have attacked North Korea uh, in, in this and that he would have attacked. Um, uh, Putin, but to say that that America is going to uh, send nukes to China, yeah, and, what and the also fuck? what the fuck? It's so off, and also to say that China it shows a willingness to to um, to to go to war. I so when I originally found this clip, I fact checked that right, and so the the last um, conflict China was in was in two thousand and twelve. But there was 20 other nations involved in this conflict. It was a very small conflict. And it was like, 
you know, Germany, uh, like all our allied countries were involved in this in this conflict. I can't remember exactly which conflict it was, but before that, you have to go back to the north to the North Korea or to the Korean War, and before that, you have to go back to when they were fighting against Japan, and they had some small skirmishes with other countries during World War II. But China is not a country uh, known past the stage of you know warlords living with tribes as a country that just runs around at attacking people unless you're tibet you, you know what i mean if you're tibet you're fucked but they, they, they don't usually go out of their little central area where they have the little islands around so i don't know what the fuck he's talking about well neither does he so that's fair <laughs> yes. that's right. i mean if, if you're china do you want do you want more people and land? Is that what you want? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so sure that's on the table for them. Like, nah, bro, we got, we got plenty. Uh, can you picture like a a uh, translated version of Alex Jones into Chinese? <laughs> and, Holy uh, Christ! <laughs> and all the Chinese people are just kicking over, laughing. This motherfucker is so stupid. <laughs> oh, I like how in Ed's mind, Chinese people are black. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this uh, motherfucker over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was like the worst. Alec- like I know mine's not great. Where I'm like the data and the helicopters and the black SUVs isn't great, but that was literally the worst. Alex Jones like impersonation. Is that what that was? I don't know. Was it because it can't be Chinese? <laughs> 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 that can. Possibly, like in the oh, he's right over here. It is if it is Chinese, that is literally the worst impersonation of a Chinese person. Like even when people do the exaggerated version in North America, where they you know they do that awful Chinese accent, that was the worst. Ed, you well, sir, for, you okay. sir have been tagged with the worst. Well, Chinese uh, accent. may I, I say that this list. is the strangest turn of a conversation I've ever. <laughs> <experienced>. <laughs> Let me, so, John, me... what you, ta- you talking about on the podcast last night, John? Well, we started talking. Uh, we started talking about uh, you know bad Chinese impression of Alex Jones. You know, it's just hilarious. <laughs> okay, oh, next <laughs> clip, please. Uh, oh, oh, son of a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, we get. Um, oh. can I kind of bring this to like a Canada Chinese thing for a second? Uh, I don't think you have a choice. Go ahead. Okay, so there is a problem with China and the Allied countries and. The problem stems actually from Justin Trudeau. During the Harper years, China tried to buy a communications company that was involved with communications for the allied nations. And it was a way that we communicated with each other. And the Chinese government owned a percentage of that company. So CSIS told Harper, you cannot allow this sale to happen. So Harper put in place... um, laws and blockages for countries that were security risks that can't buy um, companies that have anything to do with the military when the Chinese government owns a company. Well, there is a company um, in China. It's a technology company that is owned 25% by the Chinese government. Canada right now has a company in Quebec that is literally the world leader. It is the number one in laser technology, which is the future of military weapons. All the military minds say it is. And they tried to buy this company when Harper was in charge. CSIS did a security report on it. CSIS said, no, you cannot sell this. This is an extreme security risk to not only Canada, but to the allied nations. It is our one leg up against China, Russia, Iran, uh, North Korea. And Trudeau started taking all these blockages down. And within the last three weeks, I've spoken about this before, but what I haven't said on the podcast is within the last three weeks, Trudeau has given the green light for this company that is owned 25% by the Chinese government to buy this laser technology and the company, which was our leg up. What do you guys think about that? Uh, to be honest with you, I'm not well enough up on it to really have an opinion on that. I don't want—I don't feel comfortable trying to voice one. 
I'll have a look. Okay. I'll, but I will. It's certainly got my attention. I'm certainly going to look I, at. I, I, I'll send you the links, John. Absolutely. Sure, do that. Yeah. yeah. Ed. Yeah. It's it's very scary because this laser technology um, is what the future of modern of modern weaponry. You know, it's the fu- it's the future of what modern weapons will be using, uh, not just to uh, hone in on a target, but actually to destroy a target. And mm-hmm. the fact that it's being sold to someone who can disperse it um, to our enemies, quote unquote. I find it very disturbing. So I, I let, don't let, like this. Let's at be all. honest. We're selling it to a communist regime. Yeah. Well, let's let let's be fair, guys. Uh, China really respects copyright laws and and uh, intellectual property, and not just letting huh. information like this just blow into the wind. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's cre- in- <laughs> it's insane. Okay, yeah. so I, I I took us to a little dark place there. You you want to queue up the next video for us, Dustin? Uh, we're going to stay on topic tonight with World War Three, and we're going to see what. Uh, what Wilds has to say about it. Rick Wilds, that is. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, America. Yes, sir. Go ahead. You like bombing countries. You're proud of it. It's America first. We're feeling big and bad right now. We got a president that will bomb people based on Facebook postings and his daughter's whispers. I want to stop real quick. Um, America first was an anti-interventionalist movement. Yes. So what? Well, what if Putin's daughter tells him to bomb America because she saw something on Facebook? You're going to get it. The Bible says you're going to get it, and it's going to come to you good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall nations bomb unto you? What? When the fuck in the Bible do you see anybody talking about bombs? The word bomb. The word bomb, yeah. (laughs) He, sw- he he may be switching up. So th- he he was- and yay though they went through Facebook and did not find him. <laughs> <laughs> but the memes were extra spicy on this side. Yeah. <laughs> is there more of? Is there more and of the, and the Antichrist yes. will use thy Twitter account. <laughs> we're just getting started. Oh, okay, go, I got that. I go got ahead, that. go ahead, Dustin. Oh, we're just getting started. <clears throat> For God is not deceived; he is not mocked. For whatsoever a nation bombeth, that shall they also reap. <laughs> I'm sorry. The gospel according to moron. Bombeth. <laughs> Thou shalt lovest the holy hand grenade. <laughs> oh. He's got his machine gun. It. He's going to war. <laughs> Thou shalt remove the pin first. And just that was count to three. <laughs> Bamath. Oh, I don't. I'm going to go through the whole Bible right now and see where I find where Bamath. Oh God! Bamath. He's showing up like a bomb. <laughs> oh, what a failure of a human being! Oh my God! Like, let's remember before Trump started bombing Syria, Rick Wiles was his biggest supporter. Okay, carry on. Oh. Sorry, that was so big bomb. <laughs> Get it out of your system. Go for it. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, guys. I apologize. I, I was oh, trying no. to keep it together, but fuck me, man. Holy fuck. Okay, go ahead, Dustin. All right. We're not even halfway right through. <laughs> you sow blood, guts, and war, you're going to reap it, baby. America needs to stay home. You want America first? Stay home. Mind your own business. Let ExxonMobil fight its own war. Let Israel fight their own wars. Why do we have to fight Israel's wars? Why do we have to fight for Goldman Sachs? Let them fight their own wars. America, stay home. Oh, he is Christianing all wrong. Mm-hmm. Like, what? What? That's what? Doesn't he know that Jesus is coming back? The, yeah, there? Jesus was a Jew, and and we're supposed to, like, we we totally need Israel to be a thing, in order for all of it to be true. Anyway, 
<laughs> be America first and let other nations alone. And I'm saying right now to the people of America, the sword is coming. I've been saying this since 1998. He has the most pregnant pauses in the history of mankind. He's, he's as bad as Captain James T. Kirk. I keep thinking that my that my phone is like freezing. Like, like that's, what, that's what I thought was going on. It, it, no, yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no. I, I thought it was one of those robot things. No, it's he's fucking, just fucking dumb. Dramatic, dramatic, dramatic pause for dramatic oh. effect. But it's it's like you're like, is there more? Anyways, okay, go ahead, Dustin. Yes, is no. it over or like? No, no, no. We're like fucking two thirds of the way through. Oh, this is painful. I didn't pick. You picked these anyway. I did. I did. You're right. I've never changed. You accuse me of selling out. You accuse me of being a coward. You accuse me of turning and running. You're a liar. I've been here for 19 years, and I'm telling you, World War III is coming. The sword is coming to America. Repent, America. And you people in the churches, you think you're saved. You're not saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Turn from your wickedness and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Or you will die in your iniquity, but your blood will not be on my hands. Who said it was going to be on your fucking hands, you stupid fuck? What do you have to do with the? Okay, so he's the only one that actually believes in Jesus. All the other Jesus believers are not Jesus believing enough. And their blood, like, they assume that their blood is going to be on his hands. This is the guy that fucking said that gays should be killed, by the way. Hold, hold on, hold on. This is this is Oppenheimer, right? He has become death, yes, destroyer yeah. world. Like that, yes, that, that's I, happened, I have right? become he's, I have become death. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is Oppenheimer speaking. Um Yes. Right, right. He's he's literally wringing the blood from World War II. Uh yes. so he he understands the weight of what's happening. Like the hubris of this man. Holy except, fuck. Except <laughs> Rick Wiles has the uh, the intelligence of a fucking first grader where Oppenheimer was a super genius. I know. I'm, and, I'm pretty sure those pauses were because he, they have to write like five words on giant cue cards and just keep flipping. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, think, I think that's what was happening. Uh, yeah, no, he keeps looking down and he can't find his spot. <laughs> oh, God damn. I, I just looked it up and it comes from a little known script of a, you know, Aramaic. That says uh, it's called uh, the cockeyed doctrine, according to Wiles, and ba- um, <laughs> fuck Edward Bomith, thy neighbor is in it. Wow. Yeah, thou shalt pull thy pin and hold it for three <laughs> seconds, then bombeth the shit out of thy neighbor. Yeah, this guy, this guy was railing against Obama for not being tough enough on Muslims and ISIS in the Middle East. And now all of a sudden he's like, no, no, like I, I like it's so, it's so not his character to be saying not to bomb these people. And is the Israel thing that is beyond because most Christians believe, don't they, that Jesus is coming back in Israel. But don't they all want a fucking nuclear war to, to end it all, to bring on the Messiah? Isn't that what they were fucking all about? I, I, that's what I thought. Oh, they're not sure. That's why we have wars. <laughs> we'll try to figure it out. One one more at a time. They're getting experience. <laughs> I'm I sorry. Mean, the last half of his speech cannot top bomb it. Bomb it. Right. <laughs> bomb it. <laughs> Fair enough. Like the rest was pretty tame compared to Bombas. I'm trying to find fucking nuggets in it, but let let's be honest. The pinnacle of that fucking speech was how he said that fucking Bombas was in the fucking Bible. Like Jesus fucking Christ. Mm. Oh, I, and I'm using that in in the most secular tense of the fucking word. Holy shit! What an ass. All right, guys. I think that is about the show for this evening. This was the Wayward Atheist Podcast. Visit our new website at waywardatheists.com. Follow us on Spreaker, spreaker.com slash waywardatheists. You can email us at waywardatheistpodcast at gmail.com. Find us on Twitter at waywardatheists. 
and on facebook.com slash waywardatheists. If you enjoy our content, feel free to leave us a review on iTunes and feel free to support us at patreon.com slash waywardatheists. Thank you.